Okay, so an overview of what we're going to go over here. Um, I'm going to go over the welcome letter and some upcoming deadlines that we have for our incoming students. I'm going to do a short building overview to kind of just briefly go over some accommodations that we offer our first year students. Um, meal plans, I know it's a hot topic. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them into the chat and some resources available to our incoming students and parents. So, um, and I will be going into the portal to show you how to update your preferences um, because that deadline is quickly approaching. So before we actually get started, I did wanna remind everyone that we do have the first year portal on the web browser and also through the MyPit mobile app that is available to our students. So. Um, any information that you see here today can be found on our website or through the app and feel free to download it. We are really pushing that this year for our incoming students because we do have the ability to send reminders and things like that through the application itself. Okay, so um, we are at May 18th. Um, at this point, you could be a first year student who had a deadline that was prior to today and you could be a first year student that has a deadline coming up. All of our deadlines are on Saturdays. So um, we've had the 1st, the 8th, the 15th, and we have upcoming the 22nd and the 29th. Um, your specialized individual deadline is in the email that we send to your PIT email address. So you wanna make sure that you're checking your PIT email consistently because your deadline is indicated in that email and it is based on when you deposited through admissions. So if you deposited in admissions, let's say sometime in April, um, it generally takes seven to 10 days for their information to get pushed over to our housing system for us to get you set up. And then you should receive instructions on how to apply and your deadline within those seven to 10 business days after you deposit through admissions. So you wanna make sure that you're completing your housing application by that deadline that's indicated in your email. Um, that is to pay the deposit and complete the housing application, but then also to pre-submit your photo for your Panther card. So that's another crucial step to make sure that you are ready to go for arrival. By pre-submitting your photo, that means that we can either print your ID and mail it to you beforehand, or it's ready for you to pick up on the day of your arrival. Um, so you want to make sure that you're getting both of those two things completed by your deadline. Um, a deadline that is consistent through all of our first year students is the preferences deadline, which is June 1st. And the two most crucial portions of this deadline are roommate requests and LLC community requests. So a living learning community is um, a community that is either academic or interest based and you have to indicate on your application that you are interested in living in that community. And you also have to complete the supplemental application to be a part of that community. So both of these two things are due by June 1st. So you want to make sure that if you are interested in either having a roommate and you have a specific roommate in mind or you're interested in an LLC that you complete that portion of the application by June 1st. Um, this grid here, it can be found on our housing website, but this is something that I do typically send to students who might have questions about what preferences they should put on their housing application as far as buildings. Um, some of the common questions that I get asked are, you know, what's the best option for me if I want a roommate? You know, what should I put down if I want a single? And this grid kind of outlines what I would say back, um, you know, some questions that I typically ask back are, are you interested in one roommate? Do you want several roommates? Um, are you interested in buildings that have communal bathrooms, private bathrooms? Do you wanna be on lower campus, upper campus? And also like is air conditioning a priority to you because it typically is only warm in Pittsburgh um, a couple weeks out of each term. So um, generally students don't really mind if there's air conditioning or not. Um, but that is something that we put on this grid as well. So um, if I were interested in a double, um, maybe I just wanna be paired with one other person, I would probably put all of the buildings on here that are indicated that have doubles. So I'd probably put towers A, B, 
um, Nordenberg, Holland, if I want to be on lower campus. And then if I'm interested in being on upper campus, I would probably throw Sutherland on there as well. Okay, so this is our current offering for meal plans as an incoming first year student as a meal and a meal plan is required when you are living on campus um, in one of our first year accommodations. It might seem a little daunting to pick your meal plan right now. However, you do have the opportunity to change your meal plan all the way up until add drop of the fall term for the fall term. So um, if you put on your housing application now that you are interested in only the weekday unlimited with the 150 dining dollars plan and you get assigned that, but then you're on campus, you're seeing that you want to stay on campus more often on the weekends, maybe you join a club or an organization that meets on the weekends and you want to upgrade that to an unlimited plan so you can get into the perch or the eatery on the weekends. Um, you do have until add drop to do that. So don't feel um, too afraid that choosing your meal plan right now um, is what you're stuck with. You have plenty of time to change that come the fall. And then also, if you're interested in changing your meal plan for spring, we do open it up again later in the fall term to change your meal plan for the spring because we know that student schedules change from term to term. Um, I will save some of the more specific information regarding meal plans for the Q&A. If you have questions about what it means to have a meal pass, uh, a meal exchange, and dining dollar. So if you would like more information on that to drop it in the chat. We can go over that um, in a little bit. So this is just a screenshot of what the first year portal looks like for students. Um, we always indicate that step one is to complete your housing application by your deadline that's in your email. And then step two is gonna be to update your preferences and apply for an LLC if those are based off of your interest. So. If you're not interested in living in an LLC, there's no reason to go in and complete that application. But if you're interested in updating any of your other preferences, um, which I'll show you in a couple minutes, um, this is where you would do that. You wouldn't have to go back into your actual housing application to update that. As an incoming student or parent, um, you do have these resources available to you. Um, we always post information on our housing services website, which is linked here. Um, Panther Central is also a really great resource. They are open 24 seven. You can email, chat, or call them. If they are not able to answer your question, they will forward it to my housing team and we will get the right answer for you. And then as always, there's an upcoming Zoom session next week. It is our last one that is on the calendar. Um, so if you have any more questions that you feel as if would benefit the the greater good of everyone, feel free to drop by into the Zoom session or register for it. And we do have our prior Zoom sessions on our website that you can always access to watch and get answers to your questions. Um, so I'm actually gonna go into the portal now so that you can actually see what it looks like. Um, so this is that portal that I had shown before as a first year student. I've already completed my housing application weeks ago, but maybe I wanna go in and update my preferences because I know that I can do that as many times as I want before that June 1st deadline. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this here and open up this page. So um, all this information has already been asked in my housing application, but this is where I wanna go in and update it because some of my answers have changed. So. Um, I'm, I'm still interested in that 12 month housing option. Um, doesn't, it's not me saying that I'm committing to that, but it just means that I am interested because maybe I'm not local and I have an internship next summer. So I wanna have information sent to me whenever the time comes for 12 month housing. Um, the resident student association, I wasn't interested before, but you know, my older sister was a part of it and she said that's a great idea. So I think I'm gonna change that to being interested um, my original first year LLC request was honors, but now I'm going to update that to ROTC um, because maybe I was accepted into the honors college, but maybe I'm, I'm more interested in living with my ROTC um, friends rather than in the honors community. And this question here, this assignment priority um, is mostly for our students who are 
interested in living in an LLC, but also have a roommate request. Um, because we do have years where we're not able to pull in roommates who have not applied for the LLC um, because it's full. But we also have years where we do have time. And I mean, we do have space to pull in those roommates. So this question here are for students who would ultimately be committing to both. And if by chance there's no space for the roommate, we would reach out to the student and say, we see that you indicated that you'd rather be released from the LLC to live with your roommate. We're going to do that since you indicated you'd rather live with your roommate than be in the LLC. Um, but if you are someone who is not doing one of those two things, you don't really have to answer this question because generally it'll either be your LLC request or roommate request on your application. So before I had said that I'm interested in living in a double next year with one roommate, um, but I think I really want to try to stay on lower campus. So I'm going to keep all of my doubles here, but I think if it really came down to it, I wouldn't mind living in a single by myself. So I am going to update my building preference to a Holland single as my fifth choice. So that is now updated. Um, if I have any updates to my roommate matching questions, I can do that here. And then if by chance I have met someone, whether that's through, you know, life or Facebook or room sync, um, I want to go in here and create a roommate group. Um, and this is where, as a part of the group, you want to indicate someone as the leader. Um, so I'm going to be the leader and I'm going to go ahead and invite my friend Holly to live with me. So there's Holly. And you can see that now Holly is invited to live in my group. And now that Holly, all that Holly has to do is go in and accept that invitation. So she should just go in to her preferences page and where it says remove on my end, it'll either say accept or decline and she can accept that invitation or decline it. And then her status gets updated to a member instead of invited. Um, and whenever we do assignments, we only see full groups as students who are a leader or are a member. You cannot be invited to a group to be considered to be a part of the group. Um, and we do send reminders to students who are currently invited but haven't accepted their invitation. So we'll start sending them um, one, we'll send one this week, we'll send one next week, and we'll send one again on June 1st to let them know, this is your last chance to be a part of this group if you wanna be a part of it. Um, if you are not a member by, 11.59 p.m. tonight, you are not considered a part of this roommate group um, because starting on June 2nd is when we start doing our housing assignments for all of our first years. So um, you want to make sure that everything on this page here is updated by June 1st because we take all this into consideration whenever we start doing our assignments. Um, and then at the bottom here, this is where you can update your meal plan. So after you make all of your updates, you just click finish and then um, the process has been completed, so my preferences have been updated, and I can do that as many times as I want before June 1st. So um, if I have an update to my roommate group, I can go in and change it there. I can go in and change my buildings and things like that. Um, but you have all the way up until June 1st at 11.59 p.m. to update that until it is taken down and you can no longer make any updates to your application. So now that we have completed the presentation. I am gonna open up to Q&A and I see that we have lots of questions coming in. Um, so I'm gonna start from the top. Um, okay. Tony, I see that you have some questions regarding um, dining hall and dining hall hours. Rachel has responded to that. Um, saying that we typically do have dining locations that are open past 8 p.m. And if you want to find a uh, direct contact to the dining team, um, that the website is listed there. Okay, so this is a popular question that we get probably for every Zoom session, and that is um, if a student is accepted into the Honors College, do they have to fill out the LLC request and application to be considered um, a part of the LLC? And the answer is yes, 100% yes. 
Just because you were accepted into the Honors College does not let Honors College know that you want to also live with Honors students. So that's two separate, completely separate um, applications. So um, you want to make sure that you indicate Honors on your housing application and then follow up and complete the Honors LLC application because they do give Honors College students priority to live in the LLC, but it's not guaranteed. So you want to make sure that you complete your application so that they know that you want to live there and you have an opportunity to live there um, and they are not guaranteed a spot there. I will also say that students who are completing the LLC application and are interested in an LLC should complete the building preferences of their application as two completely separate things as well. Assume that you when you're filling out your building preferences, assume that you're not going to get into the LLC so that we know what buildings you would want if you are not accepted into the LLC. So if you know that honors is in Sutherland and you want to live in Sutherland, but for some circumstance you don't get into the honors and live in Sutherland, but all that you've put on your application is Sutherland, but really you wouldn't mind living in Towers or Holland, I would definitely put Towers or Holland down as building, uh, building preferences on your application. Um, Brennan, the music LLC information can, Amanda had responded to that, but Amanda, do you want to touch on a, a little bit about LLCs while we are getting some questions about them? Sure. So lots of, lots of great questions in the chat. I have done my best to keep up with them. Um, but there were a couple that I also named that I would answer live. So Jenna, when we get to them, um, I will speak to those too. Um, but, but we do have um, three different kinds of LLCs. It's a bit nuanced, um, but our LLCs are either academic program based. So that's things like honors, engineering, a business. Um, and then we have LLCs that are academic course based. Those are tied to particular academic course credit bearing courses. So those are both through our gender, um, sexuality and women's studies departments. And those require being enrolled in a specific course, i.e. gender and sexuality or women in leadership and enrollment in the LLC. The third and the one that seems, um, we've got a couple questions about in the chat are our special interest LLCs. So those are not tied to enrollment in an academic program or enrollment in a specific academic course. So those are things like music, service to others, appreciation of the arts, um, Casa Cultural, uh, Global Village, where students are looking for a living learning experience that are more based around interest um, and engagement in that interest in those spaces. And those do not require any sort of academic enrollment. Um, so what I will also name that we do have a music department at Pitt, but the music LLC is a bit nuanced because we invite any student who has an interest in music and engaging um, in music um, and music performance, music education. Um, we've had lots of students who just like to play instruments and want to continue doing that in the practice spaces that we have in the music LLC. So um, if you have questions about specific LLCs, just at me in the chat. Um, but like I said, Jen, I know there were a couple more. I promised I'd answer live. So when we get down to them, I'll come back. Thank you for that. Um, and I guess, I will say if one of our dining representatives wants to kind of go over some of the um, typical dining questions that we would get in one of these are like, what is a meal pass? What is a flex meal? What's a dining dollar? Um, I believe Rose or Steve might be on this call. If one of you wanna kind of go over that for our guests, that would be great. Sure, this is, this is Steve Shore. Hi, everybody. Um, so um, starting out with the meal exchange, I saw that question pop up twice. So a meal exchange is, is uh, basically taking a dining hall swipe and you are able to use it at any dining location across campus, um, especially in our retail locations. So we have menus uh, available at all retail locations um, like Chick-fil-A and our sub shops, uh, et cetera, that you, you can basically trade one of your entries or one of your swipes for the dining hall at those retail locations uh, once a day. Um, I know a, a question came up about, and I think it's been addressed the past uh, eight o'clock and the Dine on Campus website is very informational. It has information on 
dietary needs, religious eating needs, um, as well as all of our hours of operation and uh, as well as menus on there. So, it, you know, if you want to see what's going to be on the menu for breakfast tomorrow, you can go on that website and find that out or what's on, on, on the menu for dinner the following evening. Um, you can get a lot of great information there. So um, I'm not sure if there was any other specific questions that popped up. Um, Jenna, if there's anything you saw that maybe I could uh, help answer. I don't think so. Um, but so the flex meal, that is like a one for one. So Chick-fil-A would have specials on the board that says you can use one meal swipe here and it will give you you know, maybe a sandwich deal or a nugget meal or something like that. It's not that you can just use it on anything on the menu. There are specific meal specials that you can use those swipes for, correct? Yes, that's correct. They're outlined at every location okay. um, on, on our menu boards that details what the meal exchange or flex pass would be um, or what you can get for that value. So um, yeah, each, each, uh, each place has its own menu. They do fluctuate a little bit semester to semester, but the, it is detailed out what, what is equivalent to each. Okay, and do you wanna go over what a dining dollar is? Sure, basically a dining dollar is, is like cash that's on your account that you could use at any location. If it were uh, the Forbes Street Market, which, which is our on-campus uh, grocery store, you could use it in our convenience stores if you just wanna buy uh, bottled water, toilet paper, a toothbrush, or if you wanted to go to one of our other dining facilities uh, and choose not to use a meal exchange, you could purchase basically anything off that menu and use it as like a cash value. Great. And, I know and those can be reloaded at any time. If you've depleted those funds, you can add back. Um, so you can use those funds anywhere on campus. Awesome. And I know that we only have you for a couple more minutes, but um, can you touch on if a student has like allergy needs and things like that and how we can accommodate them? Yeah, absolutely. We have a, an on-staff dietitian that works on our team that is happy to set up one-on-one um, -on -one sessions, private sessions, uh, tours around campus. Uh, he's very knowledgeable about our menus across campus. We do have allergen call-outs on our menus in the dining halls. Uh, we also have a location in the eatery, which is our main dining hall in the, at the bottom of the towers that is called Flourish, and that is an all allergen free zone. So it accommodates the, the top nine allergens, which there's now a ninth allergen. Um, but we have a, a very robust communication system as well as, uh, you know, our, our dietitian that's on staff at any time um, to take phone calls to help with meal planning, et cetera. Awesome. Um, I think that might be all that we would need. Um, Jeff, do you have a question? I think you're either giving me a high five or you're raising your hand. Hey, hey there. No, I have a quick question. Um, okay. I put it in the text, but uh, I know you guys are trying to read uh, feverishly all the, uh, the text coming in. No, just simply, what's the most, uh, you know, it's hard to know as a freshman coming in, right? What's the most popular plan all years uh, considered? I know we have the expert on here. What's the most common, you know, the most frequently, uh, you know, uh, paid for plan? I mean, that would seem to be pretty straightforward. To the extent you can answer. Um, this might sound like we're just trying to sell the top tier plan, but our most popular plan, I would have to say, is probably that unlimited with 300, especially okay. for the first, at least, especially for the first term, because students are trying to adjust and figure out what, like, how their schedules meet, so they're. A, basically overcompensating for what they might actually need. And sure. that spring term, they might go to something else. But I would definitely say that students that have committed to that unlimited with 300 have never really backed down because those dining dollars can be spent at Forbes Street Market. So they're having like the time of their lives buying cake mixes and rotisserie chickens and all that kind of stuff. So they're definitely not starving. Um, no, I, I understand, yep. The unlimited swipes, um, and Steve, you might be able to touch on this one more before you leave. Um, if you can use how many swipes in a day? Is it once an hour, basically, if you want to grab a snack in the morning at lunch? You know, wh what are we looking at here? Yeah, and, and I would answer Jeff's question one more way in that I would use the meal membership uh, survey that's available on our site that will help you point in the right direction for, um, for your student. 
uh, that will help. Uh, but I, I do agree with Jenna that the uh, the the unlimited plus three is uh, is is definitely a big favorite. But use the the survey that might help guide you in the right direction. Um, Thank you. As far yeah, as far as the uh, the swipes, yes, it's basically once an hour. So the unlimited plan allows access to the dining hall uh, as many times. So our, our main dining hall is loosely open from about seven a.m. till one one or one a.m. or twelve uh, twelve a.m. But uh, every hour they're able to use a swipe. So if they come in for breakfast, um, you know, before class and grab an apple and a juice and class ends at nine, they can come back in um, at nine o'clock and get a, a, a full breakfast of eggs and waffles or whatever. So uh, the, those unlimited swipes allow them access every once an hour uh, all day. Thank you, Steve, for answering some questions for us. Um, and if anyone has a follow-up question, then please just drop it in the chat and we can answer it as we come in. Um, I'm gonna keep going through some questions in the chat while we have time. Um, I'm gonna reiterate that all of our buildings do have heat, but they not all of them have air conditioning. So um, if that is something that your student is requesting um, to make sure they're preferencing buildings that have air conditioning on their housing application, um, what is a Sutherland double six person suite? So um, a Sutherland six person suite is a suite that is made up of three doubles and a bathroom. So um, it houses six students, you have one roommate and then you have five suite mates. So, and then you all share a bathroom with a toilet and a shower. So that is what a Sutherland double six person suite is. Um, Jennifer asked, will I be paired with someone random if I don't request a roommate? Um, if you are someone who doesn't have a roommate request, but you put on your housing application that you are interested in living in spaces that have roommates, you will most likely end up with a random roommate because um, we wouldn't know that you wanted to be in a single or something like that. So if you don't want a roommate, you should probably indicate on your housing application that you want a single and we will not hold off another space in a building for you if it's a double. If it's supposed to be a double, we're gonna put two students in there. Uh, students who are accepted into the Honors College are not guaranteed Sutherland housing. They are prioritized um, to be accepted into the LLC, but you still need to complete the application. If you are interested in finding out costs for various spaces, um, you can refer to our website and we will link it below, um, but our rate sheet is posted for the 21-22 school year. Um, Amanda, I know that you are not technically overseeing RSA, but can you kind of briefly go over what RSA is? Sure, um, I did, I will say, um, I would normally defer to my other colleagues in residence life. RSA is not my uh, realm of responsibility in residence life, but I can tell you two things. One, it's a great opportunity for students who perhaps are looking to get involved or have been involved um, in their high school settings and are looking to stay involved in things that are governmental and programmatic. So um, the Resident Student Association is a great way to start. If you go to rsa.pit.edu, it talks a lot more about how our Resident Student Association works both at the hall level and at the campus community level. So we have individual um, hall uh, like building associations. Um, and then we also have the RSA, which is our global um, global uh, <laughs> campus wide um, resident student association. So again, I dropped it in the chat, but it's rsa.pit.edu. Lots of great information. It is a great, and I would name almost really easy way to get involved because there are a ton of opportunities within RSA. Um, so if you are looking for something programmatic, if you like to um, if you've held treasurer know, positions in the past, it has been, um, there's lots of opportunity huh? there as well. Oh, yeah. um, and I will also well, name, there's a couple sure. people, if you could just mute your mics um, so that we can get, awesome, I just don't want to, I'm easily distracted. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> um, it's a really great student leadership opportunity as well. So um, definitely, 
I highly recommend getting involved with RSA. I was involved with RSA when I went through college and it's how I met a lot of my friends and it's how I actually got involved in becoming an RA on campus. So um, RSA is great. It's never a bad idea to get involved in something like that. I can tell you that. Um, do most honor students participate in the honors LLC? So this is a tough question because um, lots of honor students apply for LLCs widespread. I'm not going to say the honors LLC um, because we have plenty of honor students who don't apply for the honors LLC, but instead apply to LLCs that pertain to their major or their interests. So we have plenty of plenty of honor students that are in the engineering LLC, health sciences all over campus. So I would say it's probably 50-50 as far as who's involved in honors to honors and honors and other LLCs. And um, Amanda, I'm sorry to bother you one more time. Um, do you wanna talk about how students can further their LLC experience into their sophomore and third year on campus? Yeah, absolutely. I left my camera on because I saw this, this one coming. Um, so yes. Several of our living learning communities do have um, upper class opportunities as well. We do have a larger number of first year LLCs, um, but our, our upper class LLCs are um, some are unique to the upper class experience. So we have some LLCs that are only available to our upper class students. Um, but then we also have LLCs that are continuations of um, first year communities. So, for example, um, engineering, um, health sciences, honors, all have upper class options as well. That does not mean that in your first year, if you pick an LLC, that you are then committed to that living learning community for the rest of your time at Pitt. We have lots of students who opt into um, program-based. So maybe I did join health sciences or uh, engineering in my first year. Um, but you know what, in my sophomore year, I really loved the LLC experience, but I'd like to try something new. So maybe I'll join service to others, or maybe I'll join the multicultural LLC um, in my sophomore or junior year. So lots of opportunities to both persist into additional years in um, some of our LLCs, but then also great opportunities in your sophomore year to try a new experience. Um, and I will also, there's a question coming up, Jenna, so I'm just going to answer that one too, about not only about persisting into second years, um, but having second choices. Um, so someone in the chat asked if you could name an interest in one, uh, more than one LLC, and we actually highly recommend that. There is an option to choose a second choice um, through the LLC application process, and that's beneficial for two reasons. Number one, um, some of our LLCs are more competitive than others. Um, I would name that those tend to be the academic based LLCs. So engineering, honors, business, health sciences. Um, what happens there if you've chosen a second choice that gives us an opportunity to still help you engage in the living learning community aspect, um, but maybe in an LLC that has not reached capacity. So I highly, highly recommend that you name a second choice if you're really interested in the LLC experience. Um, maybe use that second choice to do something that is of interest, special interest to you. So you know what, if I don't get into the health sciences LLC, I also really have a passion for service learning and engagement. So maybe I'll put my second choice as service to others LLC um, so that I can still get that LLC experience regardless if I get into my first choice LLC or not. Thank you for that. Okay, so we'll continue on. Um, room preferences, you should, you should at least list three and up to five. So if you're in that spectrum, that's all that we need. We will try our best to get you into one of your top building choices. Um, if for some reason you have a specific application question regarding roommates and being added to a group, I would contact Panther Central so we can look into troubleshooting the issue for you but it should not take three days for a roommate invitation to show up on your application. Um, Oliver asked, can you request floor mates? Um, unfortunately, we don't really accept requests like that because if we did, it would just be way too much. Um, at this time, we are only accepting roommate requests and not floor mate requests.
So the LLC application, um, like I said, is due June 1st, and then we work on first year assignments all throughout the month of June. And then we send out notice of assignments in July. Um, we aim for mid-July, so that you have plenty of time to prep for arrival. Um, so you'll find out your notice of assignment. And then after you find out your notice of assignment, you'll find out if you were accepted into the LLC or not. So we want you to find out where you are living first before you um, find out if you were accepted into an LLC or not. Um, Jeff, your question about fall plans for dining halls, have they been decided yet um, regarding COVID related closures? Um, any information regarding any updates would be on our FAQ on our website. So at this time, nothing has been decided. Um, and we are going based off of the recommendations from the COVID Medical Response Office. So um, we're hoping for the most normal year as possible. It is not mandatory to create a roommate request. Um, and if you were invited to a roommate group in the portal, you would see it on your preferences page and you would have received an email saying you were invited to a group. Um, can we jump in with questions or should we wait until you're done with the chat? <laughs> we're going to go through the chat only. And I know that we only have a couple minutes left to the session. It is only supposed to be 45 minutes. So I will try to answer as many questions as possible. Okay. This is a, just a PSA real quick. Tell everyone that their kids should be checking their PIT emails because the housing email is going there. And I think a lot of parents don't realize they are not getting that. Right. I will re reiterate that. I did say that in the beginning, but all of our communication from Panther Central or housing is going to the PIT email address. Um, the double shared four person Sutherland is two doubles that are connected with a bathroom in the middle. Um, we have not received confirmed planned move in dates um, after notice of assignments go out that is when we start planning arrival dates so arrival dates will be announced on the arrival website but your specific move in date will not come to you until your building and room assignment are communicated to you, and that's because um, move-in dates are based on what building you live in. Oh, Amanda, I saw that you answered that after I saw that. I'm sorry. Um, unfortunately, I can't really comment on Greek life housing. Um, Amanda, do you want to touch on the Greek life, or would you prefer that I say to email so um, I dropped this one in the chat too, but um, certainly you can reach out to our fraternity sorority life office through the cross-cultural leadership development office. Um, we do have some dedicated housing for our fraternity sorority members, but they are, um, uh, those are options for upper class students um, because membership into fraternity sorority life does not happen until spring of one's first year at Pitt. Um, so we do have Amos Hall, which houses several members of our Panhellenic groups. And then we do have several um, smaller houses on upper campus for our fraternity groups. But again, those are all options going into your sophomore year um, as enrollment into fraternity sorority life does not happen until spring of your first year at Pitt. Thank you for that. Um, a question is coming in, if a first year student can have an upper class meal plan, and at this time the answer is no. Um, if you have a specialized dining request, you should contact Pitt Dining, and that information is on the dining website. Um, parents are only brought in to emails once the student has completed the housing application. So. I don't have any parent information until the student actually gives us that information. So they need to complete the housing application in order for us to actually have your email. Um, so we usually send arrival information to um, the students and the parents because at that point the student has already completed the application and has an assignment. 
Leftover dining dollars do carry over to the spring semester, but they do not carry over to the next year. Uh, notice of assignments. So your room assignment is sent to you in mid-July. Students are able to have floor fans if there is no air conditioning in their building. Um, the housing application deposit is due and application complete is due by the date of the deadline, the deadline date in the email that your student gets. So you wanna make sure that those, both of those things are completed by the deadline date and then you can update your preferences after that point up until June 1st. If you have specific questions regarding room sizes within a specific building, you can find dimensions on our website. Um, so I do not know what size area rug you would need for a specific space. Um, at this time, dining dollars cannot be used at off-campus locations. Dining dollars are specific for on-campus locations. If you want to add a, um, a fund to your student's card, it would be Panther Funds. And we do have Panther Fund um, accepted businesses listed on our website. So you can check there to see where Panther Funds are accepted. Um, drinking water on campus. Um, so we do have bottled water on campus, but we also have um, water bottle fill up stations that are like water fountains within residence halls so you can use a reusable bottle to fill your water there. Okay, so I'm gonna go over one more time before we actually end the session to go um, to reiterate LLCs and buildings and preferences. So uh, if you wanna apply for an LLC, that's great. Make sure you indicate interest on your application that you wanna apply and then follow up by completing the supplemental application, which is found on the portal. And we do send instructions to students who have not completed their LLC application, but they indicated interest on their housing application. And whenever you're completing your building preferences, you wanna make sure that you're putting buildings down, assuming that you would not get into the LLC so that you have your top building choices as a part of your LLC, I mean, separate from your LLC. So if you know that honors is in Sutherland or you know that engineering is in Forbes, um, but you don't get into the engineering LLC, you wanna make sure that your building preferences match where you would actually want to live on campus if you were not a part of the LLC. And we do not disclose where all LLCs are located because they can change every year based off of availability and the number of applications. And we don't want you to put that specific building on your application um, just because the LLC is there. Um, we want you to apply for an LLC because you want to be a part of the LLC and not you, not just you wanting to be a part of that building. And we want you to be a part of a building, not just because the LLC is there. Um, okay, I think at this time, we will end it there. Um, if you had a question that we did not answer, feel free to send us a message um, through Panther Central or through our social media pages. We will be sure to answer them in a timely manner. Um, but as of right now, we still have one more Zoom session, which is next Tuesday at six o'clock. Um, feel free to go to our website and register for the Zoom session. And make sure you're sticking to your deadlines and that you get everything in by your deadline and you update your application as needed by June 1st because on June 2nd the application will be down for our guaranteed first years and you will not be able to make any updates after that point. Um, 
if you need anything else, please reach out to us. But I thank you again for being here this evening. Um, and I hope you have a great evening. Thank you.